Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to be doing a past paper question on evolution. In particular, the topic of evolution we are going to be doing is speciation and natural selection, looking at how um, body parts have changed over time and how we evolve from a common ancestor and how we also get intermediate versions of a species or the in-betweeners. Now, this particular question is difficult because it is an application question. It is not a question you would ever have seen before, um, including the animal they talk about. And so the questions on the surface may seem straightforward, but if you have no knowledge on evolution, modification with descent, uh, what is an intermediate um, fossil or organism, you're going to struggle. And also there is a little bit of a question on Lamarckism. So if you can't apply Lamarckism to this situation, it makes it even more challenging. So this is definitely an advanced question. Now, if you'd like to pause the video, attempt the question first, then do that. Otherwise, I'm going to go through the video. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe because I post every Tuesday and Thursday for grades 10 to 12 biology. So let's get into the question. Now there is a lot to unpack here and we really need to know what we're doing and we also need to make sure that we have um, sort of taken a checklist of all the information they have provided us so that we can use that information to answer the questions adequately. So the question says modern day whales are aquatic mammals and these aquatic mammals spend their entire lives in the ocean. They are thought to have evolved from four legged ancestors as represented below. And so now we have a table here. And I think what happens and the mistake that we make often is we get caught up in looking at just the pictures and we don't look at the writing. We think, oh, the writing is just like extra stuff. And now we're trying to rely on just a visual thing. And I think that's a mistake. So first of all, let's break down what we're looking at here. We are looking at a progression or a modification with descent picture. In other words, we started from species A and then we moved to B, then C and then D. And so we've made a progression over time and the body structure has changed. Now, just looking at the picture, I want you to notice some of the things that disappear and some of the things that get bigger. I want you to notice that the feet or the legs start to reduce over time until there are nothing there or they have become flippers. You will also notice the tail starts to increase in length to the port point where it actually becomes a full on like whale size tail with flippers on the end. And so now that we've sort of broken down what's happening in the picture, we can see almost playing spot the difference, really. You've seen how the, the, the body structure is changing. Let's not ignore the information that's also in the table when we are referring to the characteristics. So the characteristic in the first species, which is the Pegasetus, that is a quadrupedal carnivore, which means quadrupedal means walks on all four legs. Right, so we've got four legs, walks on all four. But then we go to the ambulocetus. Now that has flipper like large feet and a tail for swimming. Now this is a clue. We've had a bit of a progression here. We've gone from an organism that walks on all fours to an organism that now can swim and walk. We now go on to the Durodon. The Durodon has large flippers, no longer feet in the front and very small hind limbs. Remember, a limb is like a leg or an arm. Now remember, they are showing you how things are starting to change and disappear. Now, lastly, the ballerina or blue whale, this has a non-functioning pelvis. Now, if we know anything about the pelvis and the basics of anatomy, we know that that's where our legs are attached. And if you have a non-functioning pelvis, you don't have legs, which they don't have legs, but they have very large flippers. And so hopefully what you have noticed in the trend is we are moving from a land-based animal to an ocean-based animal. So we had land over here, 
and now we're moving towards always in the ocean. And so over time, the organism's body structure must match. Now, I know we spent a lot of time unpacking this, but it's really important because you'll struggle to answer these next questions if you didn't spend the time unpacking the image. So going on to our first question, it says, um, which ancestor of the whales most likely lived both on water and land. Now, remember, we are moving from land to the ocean. So first of all, it's definitely not the first animal um, and it's definitely not the blue whale. So it leaves us with the two options in the center. So we've done a bit of like power of deduction. We've gotten rid of the obvious ones that are not the answers. They're not the answers because one walks only as per its characteristic, and the other one has large flippers for swimming. So it's not those. We need one that can do both. Now, the only organism that I can see here that can walk and swim is the ambulocetus. So how do I know that? Well, if I look at its description again of its characteristics, it's got large feet, which means it can walk, but it also has a tail for swimming. And so for my answer for 3.5.1, I am going to write here the ambulo. Cetus. Right, moving on to our next question. It says, give one reason for your answer in question 3.5.1. And remember, it is a reason. Now, I want you to pay close attention here. It's for one mark, but there are, ah, excuse me, there is, it's one reason, but it's for two marks. So, go be careful here. Your one reason must have two things in it. And we've actually just pointed out what those two things are. Your reasoning is it has large feet. You can also say the whole sentence, which is large flipper-like feet, if you want to say the whole sentence. So flipper-like feet and a tail for swimming. And you're literally going to take that right out of the table as you see it. And that's going to get you your two marks. You're going to get one up here for talking about the large flipper-like feet and the tail for swimming. Both of those things need to be said. And that's why you must always use the mark allocation to guide you. Do not rely on like number, like it's saying one or two. That's not enough to tell you how much detail you need to give. Moving on to our next question, it says, explain why the ambulocetus and the duodon may be considered as transitional species in the evolution of whales. Now, let's break down the two parts of this answer. First of all, an explain question, remember, for two marks, must always have a statement and then a reason. If it was for three, it would be one statement with two reasons. So now we know how to structure our answer. What are we going to say? Well, why are these two in-between species, the Ambulocetus and the Durodon, why are they seen as transitional species or animals? Now, what you need to order to, in order to answer this question is your definition of a transitional species from your exam guideline. So first things first, our statement is going to be around the fact that they share characteristics. Now, when we say they share characteristics, that's really important because that's the, the definition of an intermediate species. It is a species that shares characteristics, but shares characteristics with who? That's where your reasoning is going to come in. So for your first sentence, we're going to say uh, the ambulocetus and the duodon share characteristics, reasoning, with the Pachycetus, um, which is an ancestor, so with Pachycetus ancestor, and with the blue whale at present. In other words, like now, today. And so what you've done here is you've acknowledged what is a transitional species, what it is. It is an organism that shares characteristics. And in terms of the whales, the reasoning is it shares characteristics with the Pachycetus ancestor and the blue whale at present. Now let's do the final application question, which is... Again, we need to really know our evolutionary theories. And this one says, explain 
according to Lamarck, why modern day whales do not have legs. Now, this is for three marks. I want to remind you the theory of Lamarckism. Lamarckism is all about, remember, use and disuse, using it more or using it less. And the other part of his theory is all about acquired characteristics, which, remember, those are the characteristics parents acquire over their um, lifetime and they pass on to their offspring. Now, those acquired characteristics, how does that appear in our uh, whales or our modern day whales? So why do modern day whales not have legs? So we're going to explain. So we're going to make a statement, but this time we're going to give two reasons um, because it's out of three, right? Remember the market location must guide you. So, Statement. Modern whales do not have legs because, statement, the ancestors started with four legs, right? Remember Lamarck? We started with something and then it changes over time. Those ancestors used their legs less, which means they disappeared. And they passed the smaller, or you could even say disappeared, because eventually they will disappear, leg trait. You can also say acquired trait onto their offspring. Now, when I show you the memo now, there is actually um, some other answers that you can give, but you need three of those answers in order to get the marks. My answer is the most straightforward. And again, to maybe clarify how it applies to Lamarck, Lamarck would have said, yes, there were ancestors of whales and they all had four legs. Because they started to use their legs less, because they swam more and they walked less. You can say that. You could probably get a mark for that as well. They will pass on the smaller legs, the disappeared leg trait, or you can say they will pass on the lack of leg trait, the acquired trait, onto their offspring. Because remember, it goes back to the idea of use and disuse being passed on through acquired characteristics to their offspring. Now, here is the official memo, and you're more than welcome to have a look at it. And I would suggest that you do, just so you can compare our answers with other potential answers that could have been given. I also want to bring your attention to the fact here that there is an all in question 3.5.3, which means, everybody, if you're not so sure, if there is an all in the memo and you're studying memos, um, both of your marks must either come from the first answer or the second answer. What it means is you can't have one mark from this answer and one mark from that. That's a no-no. We can't do that. Likewise, with the um, answer for 354, you will see that there is actually a few answers to give here. There's four in total, but you can have any three because it's obviously out of three. Now, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you haven't got my study guide yet, you should think about getting it on missangler.co.za. It really makes a phenomenal difference in studying, making it super easy to prepare for prelims and finals. I will see you all again soon. Bye.